Hey guys, what's up? BC coming back at you guys with yet another double team review. That is right. Genesis Prime is back again. What's up, people? And today we are going to be taking a look at Combiner Wars Victorian. This was brought to you by Amazon for a hundred bucks. And then brought to me by him. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, bearing all this in mind, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. When I first saw everything about this, seeing how, well, this, I was completely against this. Completely against this. Just the color scheme and everything, just, it didn't, it didn't look good, it, nothing felt right. But then I really started goofing around with it and actually playing with it in hand, and I'm impressed. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm impressed. I mean, granted, when it comes to this kind, of, this kind of thing, I am generally like, so long as the, it functions properly, I'm pretty generally easy to please. But just overall, I'm very, like, I'm very impressed with the fact that everything actually worked out in this set's case, because unlike the last fan built one everything actually holds together and like as much as i give the fan built combiners the fan built whole ordeal thing with windblade a ton of crap i actually do fully i fully do support it and through our support mm -hmm. we ended up with this you know, yeah, I say what you want about the color scheme. Yeah, the color scheme looks a little odd with the dull green and the bright ass red. Excuse my language. But it it works out pretty well actually. So basically how I've been doing how I've been doing my combiner reviews as of late, because you know, trying to do separate videos for each and every figure just it doesn't work for me. As you see, we have everybody right in front of me. This is basically the same way that I did Defense Or. And for those of you who actually sat through it and listened to me say, bearing that in mind constantly, when I reviewed Menasaur. And then essentially did the same thing with Superion when I did the check in. So, we're going to look at Rust Dust first. Rust Dust? Yes, yes, Rust Dust. Okay. These names are so weird. But yeah, Rust Dust is clearly enough a repaint. Or, well, okay, not even repaint slash retool. She is a straight up re repaint of Combiner Wars Legends Class Groove. And this actually kind of works. The more green compared to the other coat figures works out. Pretty damn good. Yeah, and I mean, like, just overall, it looks good. And then bringing it into the robot mode, because, you know, why not? Dead, And also, it's dead friggin' simple. There you go. There's the robot mode. Just let me split the legs. Stand her up. And yeah, you can, you can definitely, like, get bent and say that, you know, they got lazy. And didn't even give her, like, any feminine proportions or any of that. But you know what? Overall, with how this is supposed to go with this set, this looks really good. There's no need to make it feminine like all the other figures. Exactly. And, you know, for what this is trying to do, this looks good. This actually looks pretty good. So, yeah, there you go. There's Rust Dust. I've gone over the articulation on this figure once already. I really don't think I need to do it again. Not really. So, yeah. I'm going to hand this one over to Rob, and we are going to zoom back out, and we are going to pull front and center the leader of the team, or at least I believe the leader of the team, mm -hmm. Pyra Magna. Which you can clearly tell is a repaint and retool. Of the Voyager hotspot. Which everybody 
knows how I feel about the hotspot mold. The figure is absolute genius. <laughs> Like, and the fact that this is, lit, like, you know, the ladder assembly, this is the hotspot version, it's not Onslaught. You know, like, not to say Onslaught's bad or anything, you know, look forward to when I actually do that review, when I actually do it with Blackbird Prime. Um, but yeah, you can, you can also kind of tell that, one, I kind of have this set up to where she has the hands and feet stored on her, so I'm going to pull these off. And I'm gonna point this out right now. The see how the hands fit in the feet? I did not know that at all. At least until he showed me. Yeah, and, and honestly, I I didn't see any reviews on this prior. I just kind of looked at the hands. And I'm like, wait, there's a little slot on there. And I just looked under the feet, and I'm like, hmm. So I tried it, and I'm like, oh hey, it actually worked. So yeah. Have that sit with rust us, and here is Pyromagnum's weapon, a giant flipping pickaxe. This thing's awesome. Yeah, say what you want about how bland it looks. This looks awesome. Like, just I don't know what it is about this. I just love the way this looks, especially like like when you actually see her hold this in in robot mode. This looks friggin' awesome. Now, moving this over to the side, and actually looking at the figure proper, you can tell she is definitely a traditional fire truck. Oh yeah, a like just bit, like little, straight up red. A like, little bit of green here and there. But you know, like you can clearly tell her main color here is red. <gasps> I mean, like redder than the freaking out about symbol itself. It, it, exactly. Like just th this is this is absolute insane. This is borderline offensive red. <laughs> It'll make Optimus Prime go, "Damn you, red!" <laughs> oh man. But yeah. Um. Now, it's not perfect. We will definitely be pointing out the fact that the combiner red's right there, and they do try. To kind of hide it, like right there, but you can clearly tell it's there. Otherwise, I have no problems with this. So overall, it's a good figure, and you know, again, it's the hot spot mold. So automatically, I absolutely adore Pyromagna. Pyromagna easily, hands down. All the figures here is my favorite one of the set. I actually agree with him on that one, 100%. Now, once again, you know, it's the hotspot mold. How she transforms is exactly the same. Now, due to, I like, it may just be the one we got, but these hip joints are ridiculous. And if you look right in there, how it's kind of chewed up, that used to be a triangular peg. That would actually and stop from having the leg in the proper position for robot mode. Yeah, and honestly, for a while, when uh, Genimus had it, unless you go by a new name, when, had, <laughs> yeah, when he had it, I accidentally stress made a stress mark. And once he, uh, once he put it in my hands, I deduced the problem and I fixed it. There are still a few things here and there that need to get taken care of on it, but for now, everything is working just fine, so therefore, we can go on. I say that as a struggle with a hip joint. <laughs> <laughs> but as you're transforming it, you can clearly see more of the green popping out. Yeah, and also, here's where a lot of the magic with this set comes out as well. Because for one, you can already tell a whole ton of new parts. And I have to say, definite improvement on the figure as a whole with the new parts. For a female, holy crap. And with that said... There is her robot mode. And 
All I have to say to this is hot damn. Look at her. Look at her. She looks badass. Now get a, get a close up on the head. You can definitely, definitely see molded lips if you get close enough. Like you can just see it right there. And for one, this head sculpt is beautiful. I love the I love the way this head looks. And you know, once again, it's the hot spot mold, so you already know how I feel about the overall shape and feel of the of the actual mold itself. I love this figure and overall like just like yeah, I may be somewhat biased due to the fact that I love this mold. But specifically for this set, if I was Forced, and I legitimately mean forced, to pick a favorite, it would have to be Pyra Magna for two reasons. One, her weapon, as I struggle to put it in her hand, because, you know, video logic. Not only, not only can you do that, but you can actually get her to dual wield it to at least two hand it and if you think that's awesome getting her in the proper pose for it and hope that I don't break the damn thing you and then take these bits plug them onto the onto her backpack and you get that. And I'm going to be straight up honest. With all this, she's about to fuck shit up. Big time. Exactly. Like just, just don't mess with her. Just, just don't mess with her. So, yeah. With that said, we're, we're going to take Pyro Magna off. Have her sit. And uh, let's focus in on the, let's, let's face it, the weakest of the, of the set. These two. We have Skyburst and Storm Clash. Straight up mirror images of each other in paint and weapon. And overall, don't get me wrong, I love the Alpha Bravo mold. I have it as Vortex, I have it as Blades. So, literally, I'm saying I'm getting a little sick and tired of this mold. <laughs> but that's not to say I don't like it. I like the way these look. It's just, of the set, these are clearly the weakest. And, of course, you know, again, the weapons. The swords. These look like wings. They... Although... Oh, giving... crap. He's got an idea. I think you and I both kind of thought the same thing. Let's bring her back in, cause she's got plug, cause she's got plug-in ports back there. Would this work the way I'm thinking? Or are they too far recessed in? Oh, oh, oh no. It's official, Pyromagna is now God. It is official, she is now God. Okay, I'm done, I promise. Yeah, <laughs> put her away, boy. Anyways, moving on. Now, here's how I think we should handle this. We're gonna transform, we are both gonna transform this mold on screen to essentially show off the fact that this is literally the exact same figure so beginning of the transformation you pull this up you pull this off you kind of just bring it down plug it kind of push that up so that it holds the propeller in place unplug her arms come underneath here to split the nose cone Spin it around and then 
peg it in right up here. And notice how I'm just blitzing through it while he's being the descriptive one. It's literally because of the fact that we're essentially playing with the same friggin' toy. toy. Now bring this down. According to the legs down, which that has been a staple with the Combiner Wars line. Then you split the legs. And turn the head around. And you could, if you wanted to, rotate that around. And there you go. Now, literally, looking at the two figures, the only difference? The head sculpts. So let's see if we can actually get both of them in shot and zoomed in. Like, let's actually see if we can get them both zoomed in. You can kind of see them both right there. Um, which one's Storm Clash again? Storm Clash is the one with the visor. Storm Clash and Skyburst. Yes. So yeah, so Storm Clash and Skyburst. This is where you truly get to see the difference between the two, because they not only did they remold the heads, they remolded the torsos, where one essentially has the, lack for a better term, nipple on different sides. <laughs> he said nipple. Anyways, moving on. So, I'm zooming back out. You can clearly go down to the legs. And you can clearly... There are mirror images of each other. Yeah, like, absolute mirror images. But it does not justify the fact that within one set, you got the same toy twice. Not, like, just no... Like, no amount of justification in the world can even begin to help that. Am I saying it's a bad thing? No, because, you know, they help the set. They're needed. Now, I'm pulling them off, and once again, you know, handling a mold on our lonesome. So, I'm going to handle Jumpstream. Jumpstream has this shield and while I feel mold, like, just o overall toys-wise, Storm Clash and Skyburst were the weakest, I feel Jumpstream got the weakest weapon. This sucks as a shield. Yes. And how they want you to hold it in the figure? Like this. And yet, it makes total sense to put it in like this. Or if they... If she had pegs in her arms... You could hold, put it on an arm like this, which make it even better. Except you can't do that. But other than, other than this thing, Joshua is actually really cool. And again, bear in mind, of all the Stunicons, Breakdown ended up being my favorite, and that's. Basically, between these two, that's the case here as well. I vastly prefer this mold over the dead-end mold. So, at least so long as it's not the remold into the uh, Streetwise. And, of course, you know, clearly enough, I've already begun transforming it, because it's, it's something we've seen on my channel before. So I'm just going to go on. So I'm just going to go with it. Now, when I first had this set... I thought that this actually improved on some of the tightness in the joints for transformation. Me personally. Yeah, I, I, in, in my experience, I noticed some things actually were improved, but at the same time, where they improved in some areas, they lacked in the areas I liked before. But there's one area that has always managed to be a bit of a failure... At least, as far as I'm concerned, it was Breakdown's hips. Breakdown's hips are friggin' weird. I know how, I, like, I've I have enough experience with the mold now where I can I can deal with the hips, and basically all you really gotta do is just twist them at the waist, tighten the screw, and then bam, you're golden. Anyways, moving on. Yeah. Now here's Jump Stream. And Jumpstream, by herself, 
She looks really neat. I actually really do like this. Vehicle mode wise, she definitely pops and appeals to me more. Oh yeah. Robot mode, you can see where the differences are. She's got a new head, a new torso, and new arms. New arms. But then she has this thing that I'm still not sure how she holds this. Like just like lady, how do how do like you, like, I literally, imagine her walking into the battlefield like, how does one shield? I seriously do have to agree with BC here. Her weapon is by far the weakest. But yeah, with all that said, you know, that's it for Jumpstream. So, that's it for me. Moving on to Dust Up. Now, Dust Up, obviously, you can tell is a repaint and obviously going to be a remold of the Dead End figure. The only difference is, obviously, color scheme for vehicle mode and the weapon, which I'm still clearly not what it's supposed to be. From what I understand, it's supposed to be a boomerang. A boomerang it is. <laughs> but the one issue I find with the weapon... Oh, what the Sam hell. There we go. It doesn't peg on tight enough to where it stays in place. Now, moving on to the transformation. Just like all the other figures, same transformation. We've seen it before, especially on this channel. Like, you know, like, seriously, I don't think you guys have managed to hear me rant about this mold enough. Or at least rant about this mold as Dead End. <clears throat> yeah. Didn't mind it so much as Wild Rider, but just Dead End, why, 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 why you fail? <gasps> but yeah. At this rate, here we go. Now, once again, new parts. Head. Torso. Hands. Oh my god, that's probably one of two weakest things on... One, two of the things I don't like about the robot mode. The hands. Tight as hell ratchet joints. But, to be fair, that was a stickler with this mold to begin with. But at the same time, can you really argue with that head sculpt? I mean, holy habanero pepper. It looks so good. And it gives that... I almost want to say ninja look to it. But at the same time, we're still finding out about these characters, so we don't know much about them. Exactly. So like for all we know Dust Up could be a could be a ninja and this is actually 100% accurate which if she's a ninja a uh, high five girl. <laughs> like seriously, like uh, again, if there's anything that this set has truly managed to rock aside from Rust Dust is the freaking head sculpts. Mm -hmm. The head sculpts look magnificent. Now, to point out the one other thing I don't like about this figure if, look at the arm. These two portions are painted red. This section here, red plastic. Much brighter. In person, it looks, the painted red here looks almost orange. Can't you agree? I can kind of see it now that you pointed it out. I mean, I really wasn't paying attention to that because I was actually just trying to play with the mold. Yeah. But and if you can close it up to a door, you can clearly tell there's color differentiation in the plastic. But yeah. With that said, that brings the um the review of the separate characters to a close. So bringing everybody back in. Actually, she should be over here. Rust dust should be in front. You and your gimpy ass shield, and then the the the, the freaking the freaking goddess. 
the goddess. So covering kind of, up the ninja head. So kind of backing up a little bit to get a look at the full team. With a unified color scheme, there's something about a unified color scheme that really, truly brings a team together. And this is a perfect scenario for this. Oh, it works it, numerous and ways. Here's the thing. If these weren't meant to do one specific thing, I would definitely say, you know, like, just due to the fact that these guys look like, okay, these girls look so good together... I would say pick them up just to have this by itself. But of course, this is only half the fun. Exactly. This was in this was released in the Combiner Wars line. In so, a whole box set. Exactly. This was the fan built combiner. So now, what is it gonna do? It's going to combine. So Pulling out all and, the accessories. And not just the robots. The weapons combine as well. Yes. She is actually the first one to really implement this. Now, of course, I actually have yet to actually put the weapon together. But I will give it a try anyway. So. I am assuming that this is the hilt. First. Here, I'll put the, the, the weapon for you. You want this side of the pickaxe to show up front for combining reasons. See these two tabs on the sword and these slots? You want to get the pegs and the slots. Just like this. And to do the same thing for the other side. And you already have the looking of a giant blade. Which then you proceed to attach. Then you take dust ups weapon giant peg here goes through a hole and these little tabs right here will go through little slots on the handles of the twin swords hmm rather ingenious. locking in place and then, and then taking the gimpy shield of nothingness taking the peg right here sliding it into the hole and this little pig right in the middle of the shield that you can't really see goes right in there. And there's a tab right at the tip here that goes in this little slot on the blade. And with that done, you get Victorion's sword. This is badass. Oh, yeah. So now we're going to put this off to the side. Because now, we have all of this stuff to work with. First things first, as always, Rust Dust. Rust Dust will transform the exact same way at this rate. And Jetimus discovered something. <laughs> he, put the, he put Victorion's sword into Warrior Optimus' hand. As he makes a cameo. That is pretty awesome, I'm not going to lie. Prime out. Oh, Sorry, I'm go. <laughs> but yeah, anyways. Getting everything set and ready to go. Come on, there we go. Fold this up and then slot it in. Again, I'm just doing it for the sake of doing it. Oh, that was probably not even in shot. Even though I really don't care if it's in shot right now because we've seen this before. All, all we're really going to get to see is new parts doing their thing. Once again, open her chest and fold her head in. And then again, my favorite part about this figure, like just this mold all together, the epic ladder wraparound. And quite honestly, it feels tighter when it's all connect wrapped around than Hotspot. Of 
it. Come on. There, there we you go. go. This one just does not want to stay in place. I don't know why. There we go. We'll take that around. Close these flaps. And she still has the same problem where the combiner ratchet joints for the shoulders will literally knock this out of, out of place. I've heard one of the fixes for this is to literally just thicken this peg to where when it claps on, it stays on. But yeah, bearing that in mind, there we go. There's the torso. Well, the lower half of the torso. There's the upper half. Now, everybody loves to put it on like this. I don't know why. I mean, I guess it, since it shows up the box art like that, when clearly enough it's designed to be like this. So don't torture yourselves trying to get all this to stay steady. Make sure it's rock solid. There you go. Problem solved. Woohoo! Now, putting that off to the side. He and I are going to work on the legs. The legs. Because, let's face it, it's, once again, it's the same freaking toy. So, bringing the legs together. Actually, you know, no. We don't have to twist the heads around because we're flipping the combiner peg around. And then we twist her at the waist. Flip that around like that because I prefer it that way. Rotate our arms like this because there's another slot here that will go into that. We're not going to do that yet because we have to collapse her legs back in. Pretty much just like the last, the other helicopter figures, pretty much transformed back to helicopter with minor changes. Exactly. And then that's when we bring these beauties in. These are Victorian's feet. Complete with a toe joint and an ankle tilt. A ratcheted ankle tilt. This probably has Vangelis screaming for joy right now. So now we can slot the feet on. And now we can take the legs and slot them onto Victorian. Now, let's raise the camera up. Now, let's back her up so we can get her out of the line so we can work on these guys. Poor girls. Essentially turning them into the R mode. Since we already have them in robot mode. It's easier to go from robot mode to R mode. Significantly easier. I don't know why everybody tries to show off all the modes in a single shot. It's like, no. Just, just mm. stop. <laughs> Bad monkey. Bad. Exactly. Bad monkey. Bad. Stupid monkey. There we go. And that in a nut. Well, actually, make sure you actually did it right. And there, in a nutshell, is her right arm. And here are the new hands, complete with pseudo articulated fingers with a oddly placed peg hole. So that's going to go on there, and then she's going to slot on as the right arm. And like clearly enough, with the helicopters down here, you can already tell this is supposed to be more of a feminine looking robot. Here's dust up. Now I kind of let myself rest a little bit and actually reach over and grab our comparison. As I am somehow not remembering how it works. Yeah. Want me to take over? Uh, I'm just really not 
used to doing stuff and not seeing it on camera at the same time. There. You're shot. And... He's probably going to fix up anything I screwed up. And again, you know, same thing that I talked about with Dead End. To make sure this doesn't fall apart nearly as easily, squeeze it right at this wrist connector. So that when you close this up and start moving the elbow joint around, it does not completely shatter under your grip. But, you know, once again, slot the hand in. Plug her, plug her in. And then taking the sword, wherever Jenna has put it. What the? He's over there. Oh, yeah. I left that in the hands of Prime. Take this and slot it into her hand. And surprising enough, these feet hold her up extremely. I need to extend this a little bit more. Or have that just fly everywhere, because that works too. Anyways, kind of moving this up a little bit more. And then backing it up a little bit. Because, you know, once again, combiners are not small. Backing her up. Just Especially a with this chick. And, but, you know, either way, there you go. There's Combiner Wars Victorion. Fully combined. This is where your $100 is going. I think it's worth it. Overall, this whole figure, the way it looks, the way it comes together, how the unified color scheme really comes together, granted, it's not that great of a color scheme, it still somewhat manages to work. And that was the bit that worried, that worried me the most, as I was saying. And, I mean, come on. Let's get one thing squared away here real quick. You cannot deny that that head sculpt looks friggin' amazing. Okay, I can... But yeah, it, it's on a ball joint, so it has wiggly waggly movement. But yeah, overall, there you go. That is essentially Victorian in a nutshell. Now, moving her over to the side real quick so we can actually get her in with a couple of comparisons. And by a couple, I mean mostly one. And the one I'm talking about is the one that resembles it the closest. Combiner Wars Defensor. Minus Groove. Minus Groove. Now granted, mine has the perfect effect add-on sets on it. So, yeah, yours, like, you know, naturally, yours is not going to look like this. Like, yours is not going to have the actual increase in height. But overall, you can clearly see here, you know, a, a lot of inspiration was taken here. Now, if I reach over and grab another comparison, as long as, yep, he is still fully connected, fully combined, let's get him in. And not missing any parts. And of course, as soon as I said that, his foot popped off. Getting Defensor out of the way. Here she is next to Superion. Who, as of late, I have been saying, as far as the combiners to come out of this line so far, he is the strongest one. He's the best looking one. He is the one that somehow manages to still hold up the best. So there are those two. Now, I would show her next to Bruticus and Menasaur, but I, I don't feel like going after 
I don't feel like getting up and getting Manasaur. And Bruticus is buried somewhere within the bag. So, I'm just going to let her begin to be the center of attention again. Now, here's the overall opinion. Genemis, you want to go first on this? Unified color scheme for robot? Very, very good. Color scheme in vehicle mode? Meh. Color scheme for robot mode? For pirate magna? Breakdown? And dust up? Very good. Jump stream. Jump stream. Ooh. Uh, storm clash and... Skyburst. Yeah, what he said. Probably the weakest colored and weakest figures of the set. Easily. But I would still recommend it, not just because it's a fan belt combiner team, but the overall flow of the figure works. And I am essentially in agreement with him. The way everything integrates together, the way the whole figure in of itself comes together the way it does, it's a unified color scheme that while, yes, it's a bit garish, when it comes together to make what it needs to, it works. It works as of right now, this. Now, given the fact that we have the Titans Return line starting up, does that mean we'll be getting a fan-built Titan figure? We'll see. I wouldn't mind it. Neither just, would I. Uh, like, just honestly, this time around, like, I, I, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but please, somebody, don't pick female this time. Please don't. <laughs> but yeah, with that said, uh, I think we're done. I believe so. With all this said, this is BC Sandy Standard and you get your geek on. May the Schwartz be with you. And I'll be putting up a video very so shortly. May the Schwartz be with you. And good night.